Hey guys, hey, and happy Monday! If you don't know what Mondays are, what are you doing here? I'm just, I'm just joking. Please stay, okay? Mondays are crime and conviction days, and we just talk about true crime and stuff over here. You know what I'm saying? So, happy June, guys. Oh my gosh, May was so long. And I don't know how long June is gonna be, but let us see. Drop my intro, please. Because for the month of May, we kinda had a theme. We talked about the lottery, we talked about fraud and stuff like that. I thought, why not come into, which month is this? June. <laughs> Can't believe I literally just said June a while ago. Why not come into June with like a theme? So we're gonna talk about female killers for this month. All right, so are you guys excited? Cause I'm a bit excited. So today we will be talking about Eileen Carol Warnos. For the duration of this video, I will be referring to Eileen as Lee because that was her nickname. Lee was born on February 29th, 1956 and her life was filled with turmoil. Her mother was 14 years old when she married her father who was 16. However, the couple filed for divorce before Eileen was even born. By the time Lee was born, her father was in prison so she never met him. According to Wikipedia, her father, Leo Dale Pittman, was diagnosed with schizophrenia and he was later convicted of sex crimes against children. While he was in prison, he committed suicide by hanging. In January of 1960, when Lee was almost four years old, her mother abandoned her and her older brother and left them with their alcoholic grandparents. Somehow, her grandparents were able to legally adopt them about two months after they were left at their doorstep. Lee didn't really know the truth about this. She thought that her grandparents were her real parents for the first decade of her life. When Lee was just 11 years old, she started having sex in school in exchange for cigarettes, drugs, and food. She was having sexual relations with her brother and she also claimed that her grandfather would force her to strip before beating her and raping her. At 14, she became pregnant. Now, no one knows who exactly the father is, but it is speculated that it was one of her grandfather's friends. She either ran away from home or was kicked out, but she had to seek refuge at a center for unmarried women. She gave birth to a baby boy, but she gave him up for adoption and she eventually went home. A few months after that, her grandmother died, she dropped out of school, and she would continuously run away from home. So one day her grandfather got fed up and just kicked her out. She was homeless and she was living in the woods near her grandfather's house, and she needed to survive, so she turned to prostitution. I wasn't uh, too high priced so I could keep the customers satisfied. And now, as you guys can imagine, adult Lee's life was not any easier. When Lee was 18, she was arrested for disorderly conduct, driving under the influence, and for firing a pistol from a moving vehicle. She was later charged with failing to appear in court. This is the first in a long line of arrest for her. Two years later, she was arrested for disorderly conduct again and there was a warrant out for her arrest for consuming alcohol in a vehicle and driving without a license. She finally went to prison for a year after being arrested for the armed robbery of a convenience store. Guess what she robbed? $35 and two packs of cigarettes. She was released, but back to her criminal ways in 1984 when she was arrested for passing forged checks. Her arrest list was lengthened with grand theft auto, illegal weapons possession, weapons theft, and multiple instances of assault and battery. Now, Lee's love life... <laughs> I don't even have to say it, but that was disastrous as well. She met and married a wealthy man, well over twice her age, but this didn't last long. 
she beat this 69 year old man with his own cane and he took out a restraining order against her nine weeks after they were married they got divorced Lee said that it was actually the other way around and he was the abusive one while she was married her brother died and she received ten thousand dollars in life insurance now it's rumored that because she received this money this is what prompted her to like get her divorce because you know she had money now and she didn't need her husband within three months of receiving this money lee was broke no she bought all sorts of luxuries i think she paid her bail she also bought a luxurious car but she crashed it shortly after Words. In the spring of 1986, Lee finally got a touch of happiness. She met Tanya Moore, a hotel maid, at a lesbian bar, and the two just hit it off immediately. They shortly moved in together, or at least stayed together, because neither one of them had a house. They would just stay at motels. So if that counts as moving in together, I guess they moved in together. Lee supported the both of them with money earned from her prostitution. And to be honest, all they had to worry about was their stay, food, drinks, and drugs. Their relationship seemed to be going well and it was exciting. Um, it lasted for three years, but even at Lee's trial, she expressed how much she loved Tanya. So this relationship was really like happiness for Lee. Now enough of that and let's get to her crimes. On November 30th, 1989, Lee killed her first victim, a convicted rapist. Now nobody knows what prompted the attack or the killing, but Lee claims that it was self-defense. Now Lee's a prostitute. We all know this. This guy picks her up to do business and he drives her to an abandoned area where he sodomizes her and brutally beats her. During the whole ordeal, Lee ends up shooting this man several times and then she covered his body with a red carpet. She robs this man and she takes his car and drives it home or, you know, to the motel. And she tells her girlfriend that she made a whole lot of money on the road and that she borrowed a friend's car, which she later dumped. Two days after, Richard Mowry's car was found. Almost two weeks later, the 51-year-old's body was found miles away. Her second victim was a 47-year-old construction worker, David Spears. On May 19th, 1990, he was declared missing and on June 1st, his naked body was found. The third victim was 40-year-old Charles Cascadon. His body was found on June 6, 1990, and he was shot nine times. Witnesses saw Lee with his car, and she also saw that gun that belonged to him. She moved on to killing 65-year-old Peter Seams, but his body was never found. His car was found July 4th, 1990. However, witnesses saw Tyra and Lee abandoning the car. Troy Boris was shot twice and his body was found on August 4th, 1990. Charles Humphreys was next. He was a 56-year-old retired chief of police and his body was found on September 12th, 1990. He was shot six times in the head and torso. Her last known victim was Walter Antonio, a 62-year-old trucker. His body was found on November 19th, 1990, and he was shot four times. Now, even though these bodies were piling up, the police didn't have one particular suspect in mind, but they were linking the murders. When the ladies had abandoned Peter Seam's car, right? They were actually involved in an accident and witnesses saw all of this go down and they saw the ladies flee from the scene and they were able to give the police a description. Now from this, sketches were drawn and they were being broadcasted all over the news. Police officers found that some of the victims' belongings were pawned and when they went to these pawn shops to get the information, they actually got Lee's 
fingerprint. Now, because she was arrested already, her fingerprints were in the system and they ran it and they matched. So they found their woman. You guys are probably wondering what role Tara played in this. It's said that she had her suspicions, but she just turned a blind eye. In November 1990, Tara had enough of the wildness, the craziness, enough of Lee, and she told her that she was going to visit her family, and she just skedaddled. She never came back. On January 9th, 1991, Lee was arrested on an outstanding warrant. The next day, the police located Tara. Now, Tara cut a deal with the police real quick, so she could not get prosecuted. She said that she was going to try and get a confession from her lover, or her former lover at this point. She also claimed that she had her suspicions, but she definitely did not know what was going on, and she feared for her life. That's why she didn't go to the authorities. So the police put Tara in a motel, asked her to send a letter to Lee, asking Lee to call her. Now, all these calls that were made were recorded. Now, Lee would call Tara, and what Tara would do was ask Lee to just clear her name, to just come out, tell the truth, and tell everybody that Tara was not involved. Lee was doing everything by herself. After 11 emotional phone calls over a three-day period, on January 16th, 1991, Lee finally confessed. She claimed that these men tried to rape her and she killed them in self-defense. During her trial, Lee was painted as a mentally unstable woman, but this did not save her from six life sentences. Any case number, I sentence you to death for the murder of David Spears. Thank you. And uh, probably see, uh, I'll be up in heaven while y'all are rotting in hell. No, while she was on death row, she did plenty of interviews. I'm going to put some in this video where she seemed very paranoid. Lee, it sounds like you've been betrayed by everyone. That's right. I I was, that's why I don't care if I'm executed and leave this planet. I'm prepared. I'm alright. I'm alright with it. How? Oh. I'm alright with it, but like I said, remember, tell, let them know that I know that the cops knew who I was after Richard Mallory died. I left prints everywhere and they covered it up and let me kill the rest of those guys to turn me into a serial killer. I know they did, because I was no professional serial killer or anything. I don't know, murderer or whatever you want to call it, you know. I wasn't special at so what I was doing. Eileen, how, I did how, some sloppy work, you know, and I left How have you prepared yourself for tomorrow morning? I, I'm all right with it. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Hey, I was tortured at BCI. They had, they had the intercom on in the room and they kept lying that it wasn't on and they were using sonic pressure on my head since 1997. Did you know that they were surveilling me before I killed? And then I knew it? And that it was covered up? Did you know there was helicopters dropping down from the sky? Deputy Sheriff with decoys picking me up four or five months before my arrest? It was covered up? But nonetheless, nobody ever asked whether me these the questions. Whether the cops were following you or not, I. Oh, whether the cops were following me okay. or not, I lean okay, what? Let's say, let's say the cops were following you. Yeah. Let's say they were following uh -huh. you. And they did everything that you're you're saying they did. Uh huh. Nonetheless, yeah. You killed seven men. Yes, yeah, sure And I'm did. asking you, what got you to kill the seven men? And I'm men? telling you because the cops let me keep killing them, Nick. Don't yeah, you not, get it? Not everybody. On October 9th, two thousand and two, Lee was put to death. Lee's final words were, I'd just like to say I'm sailing with the rock and I'll be back. Like Independence Day with Jesus, June 6th, just like the movie, Big Mothership and all, I'll be back. Now, there's many documentaries, books, articles, movies made about Lee. Um, the only reason why I even ended up doing this video is because a few weeks ago, I was watching a movie 
Monster. It came out in 2003 about Lee. I knew about the case and I just totally forgot about the case. And when I was watching the movie, I'm like, why this looks so familiar? And then I researched and found out that it was about Lee. The actress was so spot on. She was spot on. But anyways, that's all the information that I have for you guys today. And now it is time for my thoughts. <sighs> Lee is a whole trip. Like, I think that her whole life was just a mess and it's just so unfortunate that this is where she ended up you know like some people have a bad start in life and they go out and they do great things and other people they have a bad start in life and they make that start their finish lee decided to make her start her finish and that is that's just crazy that's all i can call it i mean I think she also had mental issues, but that still does not excuse what she did. She killed innocent men. Do I believe that all these men um, tried to rape her? No. But maybe the first man tried to rape her because she wasn't killing all along. I mean, maybe this perception is warped because of the movie that I watched. Because, you know, it did show him sodomizing her and whatever but why wasn't she killing all along like what prompted it you know what i'm saying something must have prompted it the world may never know and i don't know what to think about tara she she could have known i don't think that she was completely ignorant and think that her girlfriend was out there hoeing and would come home with cars and stuff like that anyways i know that you guys have thoughts and opinions on this case and i want you to leave them right there in the comment section i love to hear them thank you very much my sources will be linked in my description box i also have my social media pages in my description box if you guys want to check me out and yeah that's all from me today thank you so much for watching enjoy the rest of your week and remember to be a beautiful soul not just a gorgeous face until next time bye somehow her grandparents were able to legally adopt a adopt adapt adopt yes